Um, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, for the people who are new, I'm Christine. I'm trying to just try something new. I want to start off with telling you a little about myself. So I am in mechanical engineering. I'm on my practical experience here. So I'm a year off to um, experience for 12 to 16 months. And this is between years of your third and fourth year and studying at University of Toronto. This is common as an engineer and I am doing something a little different. I'm taking multiple internships while it is recommended that you do uh, just one so that you can really be there for the full length of a project. I haven't really seen a problem um, with taking multiple different ones. I've been very involved in many of the projects and I did see some outcomes in some of the ones I started. So I just want to let you know to not hold back. Yeah, that's about, about myself. Um, during my practical experience here, I was super fortunate to work for ES Fox, a company located in Canada. It's a nuclear fabricating company. I was a structural engineer and then I was at Siemens Health and Years as a biomedical engineer um, that worked in the medical electronics field. And then in April, I will start with Tesla in the manufacturing field. Really wanted to like see what the healthcare field was, industrial and the nuclear field. Cause for me, those are the three that I am the most interested in. And I do see a really big future. How I scored my dream interviews. Cause I will stick with how I scored the interviews. And then hopefully in a future video, if I have enough responses from people, then I will create a how I scored the internship. So talk about the interview process. For so number one is focus. Focus on the dream companies you want to work on. So this means please do not, I strongly stress, do not apply to hundreds of jobs. So just to give you some context, I know some people told me they've applied to a hundred of jobs and each of these jobs take around 10 to 15 minutes on average, I feel like, because you need to change the name on the cover letter, download it, fill out all your information. Like, um, I just want to compare this to really focusing on five companies that you really want to work for. And this would probably take four hours in application because you're really trying to build those connections. You're going out to like job fairs and using those extra resources to build those connections. Um, taking time to research really in depth the company for your cover letter and resume and this would be around 1200 minutes um, compared to 1500 minutes and out of these five applications I did get four interviews and out of these I did get three of the positions so I'm really happy with the outcome and definitely like pick those three to five dream companies you want to work for apply yourself to that when you look for these companies if you don't have an idea yet um but if not that's not a big problem too because for me i changed my i just knew like going into my experience here there were companies that i want to work for to definitely develop my skills and so i pick based on like location reputation and i mostly just applied online don't randomly apply make sure you really um emphasize the company you want to work for. And that brings me to my next point is resources. So you want to make sure that you go to those job fairs. Like for me, it's not my biggest recommendation. It's probably the lowest on the list. You already build your um, relationship with the recruiters or if the engineers are there. They really want to see your personal skills. And then once you're there, you want to really sell yourself. So just have the conversation. Don't just go off and tell them what you've done. So my biggest advice is like to talk to them, to ask them like, oh, tell me more about your company and showing them that you've done your research and that you're really interested. So for me, I've actually had a good experience. I, um, a company named Zebra, I went up to them. I gave them my resume at the job fair and briefly talked to the recruiter and the engineer. I didn't apply online or anything. And then I got an email saying, hi, like, are you available for an interview tomorrow? And I was like, oh, like I would love to. Like, I was thrilled. Connect. Connecting is really big too. So I know like LinkedIn, oh, that's for the older generation, that's for business people. Um, no, it's not, it's really not. You can get so much job advice. There's job offers on there. Like I've seen like Tesla teams just like make a post and say, hi, we're hiring for my team. Um, please reach out if you're interested. And reach out, I couldn't stress that enough. I've done that. That's how I got one of my referrals. Going on from referrals at Tesla, I've heard that referrals don't usually help, but for me, like I've only gotten interviews for 
physicians I've been referred to. So in my opinion, they do help. This one time, um, this manufacturing engineer just made a post and said, hi, like I'm interested in giving a couple people a referral. Um, please tell me about yourself. You really want to make it like very poppy. Um, don't tell them like what school you went to or small things like that because you only have like a limit of 300 and they don't care, like they can look up on your LinkedIn profile like what school you went to. Really make sure that you're pushing like the fact that you want to work there and why you want to work there. Cold emails are also really good because if you show that you've taken your time to research and, and apply it like it shows them that you are interested and maybe they will, based off that, refer you. And that brings me to my second one, promoting yourself. You want to really make sure that the cover letter you create is directed and specified for the job you are applying to. So this means um, you should only have like one paragraph on why you want to work for that company, one paragraph on why you want to work that in that position, one paragraph how your skills are good for that position. And that's why my cover letter from applying to become a biomedical engineer at Siemens Health and Years is completely different than Tesla um, manufacturing engineering. And obviously it is, like it's two different jobs, it's completely different. It's two different companies, so that already half the cover letter is completely different. Um, but if you make it like generic for everyone and you just like change the name and say X is super interesting to me because they are evolving and they are diverse and then you just change X for Y and you didn't give any of the hard facts like oh um, Tesla's opening a new gigafactory um, I would love to support in that field resumes you always want to use those keywords that they use in the job uh, information I know it's a huge rumor that they don't um, but I've heard more that they do look through everyone's resumes. Um, so that means they're like the recruiters aren't totally invested in what they'll be like what the intern will be doing in the position. They're kind of just looking over the overview. Um, they're also just looking to see if you match the skills that the job profile has. So that means you need to make sure that your skills on that job profile matches your job resume or cover letter. Because even though it's not a computer version, um, the recruiter will also just make sure that it aligns with the job profile. And for them, they'll look for those keywords, see if you match them. So you really want to make sure that you um, develop and implement it into the descriptions of your past work experience. Like make sure that you give examples so that they know that you've done it. You can't just say, oh yeah, I have a skill of four in teamwork. Putting in a description, oh yes, I did X and Y and this developed my teamwork skills at X company. That shows them that you have actually developed those skills. And finally, um, the follow-up is, I think, pretty big. And I never give up. Uh, that's my biggest thing, don't give up. I've interviewed with Tesla three times. Um, first two times, I did get rejected. And I did apply online, maybe like a bunch of times. Didn't get any interviews for those. But I've got three interviews with Tesla. And for the second one, uh, they actually did reach out and they said, yes, your application was really great, your interview was great. Um, I just lacked the German language skill because I applied to a place in uh, the new Berlin Gigafactory and they wanted someone with a stronger German. Um, but then he referred me to a position um, directly to the manager at the uh, California site. And then I talked to him and we set up an interview but I actually got this new job proposition yep. uh, following up. So I just followed up with him and I said, hey, like it was great learning about your company. I'm super interested in the position. Like it really enhanced my passion for working there and I would love to be able to support and bring and benefit the company. If you do reach out, it means, okay, you've thought about it. You're thinking about it a lot enough that you would reach back out. And then some tips I have. Uh, it's not really a tip, it's more like I totally re recommend taking like the year off between third and fourth year and for me, I'm not really doing it through the um, the school, the practical experience year. I found most of these on my own and I just want to emphasize one more time that this is the process that I take when I'm applying to internships. This does change for everyone. If you have any like other suggestions, please leave them below. Any responses? do help me understand what I should like format for my next video. Thank you for coming to my channel. Um, I hope I helped.